Hey guys, today I'm going to give you three tips on how to clean up sloppy guitar solos. Now this is a common problem that I believe all guitar players have myself included, and I'd venture to say even the greatest big name guitarists probably still struggle with this from time to time. So I'm going to share three methods that I have used over the years and I still use today. And these methods may not necessarily help you play perfect every time, but they will help you clean things up a little bit. And it's also going to help you rethink your strategy when it comes to learning maybe another guitar solo and especially writing your own guitar solos. Now make sure you hang around to the end of the video because after we go through these three tips, I'm going to share the other side of what we're about to go through here. It might sound kind of contradicting, but it'll make sense when we get to that part. Tip number one is to don't try to learn the entire solo or don't try to write if you're writing because I'm going to cover that part too. Don't try to write the entire solo in one chunk. Rather break everything down into little bite sized pieces. Of course my little bite sized pieces are like this. Hey, I'm a foodie. But seriously, don't try to play the entire solo right off the bat if you don't know it. Break it down. So what I like to do is usually break up longer solos into four part patterns and if it's a shorter solo I might just break it up into two part patterns if it's like a intro solo that's maybe 10 or 15 seconds that's that's two parts there but like the main solo like do you hear in the middle of the song I'll break that down into four sometimes even more parts so that I can focus on each individual section and learn that part of the solo. Now, again, this goes for learning another person's solo, like let's say you're jamming to some old Megadeth and you want to learn one of Marty Friedman's old solos. Man, those things are tough. So you want to break this down into several sections and just focus on one piece at a time so that you learn each pattern effectively. You know those notes before going to that next section. Now if you're writing, of course you may be playing along with your rhythm tracks that you recorded writing that guitar solo for that part and that's fine to play that through for the first time just to get something down but then what I recommend doing is kind of going back and maybe maybe open up like four different lead guitar tracks in your studio record that first part of it then record the second part third and so forth and that way you can really focus on writing each individual part to that solo and then once you have it down you just play the whole thing through here's an example So you see how I broke that up into four different sections for that guitar solo there. Now what I would do is just go back and work on playing that all the way through. So you would do the same thing if you're learning someone else's solo. You know, once you break that down into those little micro chunks, those bite-sized chunks, you'll go back later once you feel confident that you know all those parts and then play the entire thing all the way through. Tip number two for cleaning up your guitar solos is this. Practice slow. Start out by practicing slow, and I'll add to that by saying be extremely repetitive. And I like to kind of associate guitar playing with working out, with lifting weights. Now, if you lift weights, if you're into bodybuilding or just any kind of weightlifting, you know that you're going to go to a specific exercise and you may do three to four sets of that. Think in terms of weightlifting with guitar. You're going to do four sets of that pattern that you're learning, but play it slowly, okay? Now, here's a good example. Here's a, here's a little lick that's somewhat fast. Now, if I want to get really, really good at that riff, and I just kind of made that up, so hopefully I remember what I just played. <laughs> that's usually what happens. But if I want to practice and get really proficient at that riff, here's how I'll do this.
Now, the reason for practicing slow, okay, I think you guys have the repetitive part because the more we do things, the better we get. It's that simple. But the reason I do this slowly is because there's like a mental connection that happens when you're going through and just making sure you hit every note accurately. If you try to play too fast, a lot of times, especially if we don't really know the solo or if we're writing the solo for the first time and kind of haven't figured out what it's going to be yet, a lot of times we'll try to rush through it and you may skip notes or not hit clean notes but because you're playing so fast it's kind of covered up especially if you're playing with distortion you don't really hear that and then it's like okay you go back to listen to it and it's like ah, that wasn't as smooth as it could have been practicing those notes slowly really triggers something in your mind and I'm not going to get into the science and all that good stuff because I don't know it I just know that it works but it triggers something some connection it, with your mind to your hands because you're repetitively going through those notes playing those same notes over and over and over and you're playing them slowly so you're making sure that you hit each note that you intend to hit and then as you gradually build up speed it's kind of locked into your brain there that this is what you need to play so you'll naturally get faster and faster and then you can start playing the guitar solo at a regular speed whatever that may be and you're just going to be more apt to hitting those notes more accurately. Tip number three, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because it's pretty simple. And I want to get to this bonus part of this video too because I think you guys are really going to enjoy that more than anything. Uh, although I do want you to go through these tips because I, I know that these will help you clean up your playing and just kind of give you more confidence in your playing you know, as you practice them more. So tip number three here is... Guys, don't get frustrated when you screw up. Please don't get frustrated. Don't get down on yourself. There's kind of like a balance between confidence that you are a good guitar player because you're practicing. As long as you're diligent in that, you will get better. Know that, okay? Know that. So have that confidence. But at the same time, I want you to have compassion for yourself, okay? I want you to have compassion in your playing. And those two combined, actually those, those are really the definition of maturity, when you have confidence, but then you also have the compassion. Those combined define what maturity is. And you want to be a mature guitarist. You want to be a mature musician. So the confidence comes from practicing, from putting the time in. The compassion part comes from kind of like a mental slash heart space within, okay? Because that means you're, even if you get to the point where you're just really awesome, it means you don't have that ego, right? You don't want to be that person because we have too many of those out there already, but rather you have a heart of compassion when it comes to your playing and when it comes to the listener as well. And when you combine those things, when you become what we'll call a mature metal guitarist or just mature guitarist because you have confidence and you have compassion, your playing will naturally and almost magically just soar over the edge. And more important than that, you will be developing your own signature tone, which is something I talk about. I've got a video, I'll, I'll put it up here. And also put that in the description, that link in the description of this video, because I want you to keep watching this. But you'll, you'll more so develop your signature tone with having that confidence as you practice to build that confidence and that compassion, that heart of compassion when you're playing and you're not beating yourself up when you make a mistake. You just keep pushing forward. Now for the bonus tip, and guys, this is going to almost sound like I'm contradicting everything that we just went through, but I'm just going to say it because I, I think this is extremely important. It's okay not to play perfect all the time. It's okay to screw up. In fact, sometimes those little screw ups turn into these really awesome little nuances that just give your guitar solo more life. You know, and I know we talked about practicing over and over, and I think you should still do those things. I, th I think you should still build that confidence and, of course, have that compassion for your playing that we just talked about. But there comes a point where when you're trying to play everything so perfectly, it kind of takes the life out of your playing, if that makes sense. So don't worry about trying to play everything note for note just perfect. I'm not saying necessarily don't strive for that, 
but what I'm saying is it's okay if you mess up or even play something different. Sometimes when you mess up or make a mistake on guitar, sometimes it ends up being that little nuance that is memorable in your guitar solo. And if you go back and if you look at some of the, if you listen to some of the really older bands, you know, in a time where they had to record everything just kind of live right then and there, you'll hear these little, not really screw-ups, but little nuances that if you were to do that in today's modern world of recording, you would probably re-record it. You know, it's like, I didn't quite like that part, so let me re-record it a hundred times till I get it right. Well, the bands didn't have that luxury back in the day, and I think that's one of the reasons why older music is still so popular to listen to. A lot of the older metal bands, people just prefer to listen to that more than some of the modern day stuff where everything is just like synchronized and processed and just so perfect. Look, there's nothing wrong with playing everything note for note. I'm not I'm not preaching against that, so please don't get me wrong and I'm not I'm not bashing modern day metal or, or modern anything. Look, these all bands, all metal bands are talented. Let me just say that. Hey, all metal bands matter. How about that? <laughs> please don't slam me for that. But no, seriously, I, I truly I don't want you guys to take me the wrong way here. I truly think that all metal musicians are talented. They all have this a uh, higher degree of talent, and this is just me spouting off my opinion here, but I think that metal musicians do have a, a bit higher level of talent than most other genres of music. And I think most of you will probably agree with that. Not saying other genres are not talented, so please don't take that as that, because uh, I know I'll, you know I'll say some things, and then you've always got one person that will just you know, keyboard warrior away on me here. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about, whatever. Uh, but I think you, most of you guys know what I'm talking about. However, on that note, no pun intended, don't worry about trying to play everything so pristine and perfect because, again, you may be, and this is especially true in recording your own solos and writing your own guitar solos, because you may come up with something that you might have felt like it was a mistake, but then you go back and listen to it and it's like, Wow, that sounded pretty cool. That gave it that little extra memorable moment there. Again, I don't want to give any of us an excuse to just play sloppy because you should be practicing, you should be putting in the time and the effort. But on the other hand, make sure that you know, you're know you not beating yourself up so much trying to hit every single note perfectly. Because again, you know, music, yeah, it has to be great. You want it to be awesome. You want it to sound awesome. But at the same time, you don't want it to sound robotic and processed and programmed. You know, you want to give some life, some some of that human feel to your guitar solo. So hopefully all that made sense. If not, hey, leave me a comment, leave me a question. I'm always up for, uh, for talking more about this kind of stuff because it's our world, man. We love this stuff. Guys, more importantly, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please give this video a thumbs up. That really helps my channel and I really appreciate that. And also, please make sure you're subscribed and ding that little bell so that you get the notifications. I look at the analytics on here sometimes like, man, I see a lot of people watching my videos almost all the way through that aren't even subscribed. So hit that little button and then you'll get the notifications when I put out other cool videos like this. Guys, thank you so much for supporting my music and supporting this channel. There are links in the YouTube description here to go listen to my music on iTunes, Spotify, and all those good places. So make sure you check that out. Until the next video, as always, keep it metal. Mm -hmm.